For emerging infections, it's not what's known that's important, it's what's not known. One never knows the potential of an organism when it first emerges, that is, when it first crosses the species barrier from an animal to a human and infects humans. There are generally three pathways that that organism could take. One is it, trans it crosses that species barrier, infects a human, and then the human is a dead end. It makes that human sick, but it doesn't pass on further. Yeah. Rabies is a good example. It comes from dogs to humans, but it doesn't go from human to human, unless there's an organ transplant from an infected human. Then there are organisms which come from animals into humans, and they can transmit slightly from human to human. For example, H5N1, the avian influenza virus. That can, comes from chickens across the species barrier into humans. And occasionally, in very close contacts, it spreads from one human to another. It doesn't spread further. It can't spread further, but it can spread to a few numbers of people. And then there's an infection like HIV, which crosses the barrier from animals to humans, infects humans, and then spreads and continues to spread around the world. That was the concern 10 years ago when the SARS virus was first emerging. The concern was that it might become, like AIDS, a disease endemic in populations around the world because it was able to sustain transmission through many, many different generations of people. The fear was that it would continue on and on and on, become an endemic disease which was constantly present in humans, or even worse, become a disease in animals which could periodically threaten humans. Fortunately, that disease was stopped. It didn't become endemic. We don't know whether it would have or not, but it hasn't, and we're very thankful for that.